Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're gonna talk about how to calculate and how to design a footbridge and how to avoid this catastrophe that happened not far ago in London. The Millennium Bridge in London where they had to close the bridge and restore it. So first of all, if you're into civil engineering and you love to learn, just subscribe to this page. It will be a great help. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the codes that you can use for the footbridge. There's plenty of codes, but I'm going to use the Euro code. So if you, you're not using the Euro code, you can uh, still watch the tutorial and learn uh, the main idea about how to design a footbridge. So it's the basics and the codes are just a supplement about how to calculate it. So I'm going to use Euro code 0A2, which is the basis of structural design for bridges. Uh, Eurocode 1.1.4 section 8 which is when load and Eurocode 1.2 which is traffic load so let's start first of all about the load so of course there's the dead load on the footbridge then there's a uniformly distributed load that represent uh, the people walking on the bridge which is 5 kN per square meter and there's a horizontal force also you can see it here there's a point load also, it's for local verification, this one is for global and this one is for local and there's the maintenance vehicle which is also for uh, local uh, uh, verification. So we finish with these loads, there's the wind load. It's very common to calculate the wind load on the footbridge, especially if it's made from steel. When it's made from concrete, it's not a big problem. So there's the three wind direction, the Y, the X and the Z direction. I'm not going to talk about the wind directions now and how to calculate the wind on your structure. I'm going to make a separate video later about how to calculate the wind on uh, bridges and footbridges. So here are the three main types of bridges. There's the arch bridge where the load is transferred from the deck to the arch and then from the arch to the ground by compression. There's the, the beam bridge which the load is transferred by flexion to, uh, to the main sides. Here it's a truss bridge and there's the cable stayed bridge. This is the Millennium Bridge. So each structure should be calculated differently. So for example here, the force comes from here to these two pillars and then to the arch bridge. Where here the truss will work as compression and traction. And here, uh, the, the force will go to the cable. So also, there's uh, two main materials used for footbridge. There's the steel footbridges and the concrete. So the steel is more light. Uh, it will cause a little bit more problem for the vibration as seen in the start of the video. But they're easier and uh, faster to make. And there's the concrete bridges. So I'm going to talk about these later. So after calculating the loads, there's a thing that you should pay attention in footbridge, which is very important. It's the vibration of the footbridge. So here we can see uh, the Solferino footbridge in France and what happened. So we can see the bridge vibrating from uh, left to right. It's in uh, the year 2001, and this one is in the year 2000, it's the Millennium Bridge in London. We can see how it vibrated, and it caused the panic in the crowd. Some people couldn't walk also. So they had to, uh, to stop, uh, to, uh, to repair these two structures, and close them in front of people to repair them. So we're gonna say how to avoid these kinds of mess in a footbridge. So to do a dynamic verification, there's two uh, two books that I recommend. There's Setra and Hivos. So I use Setra. Uh, there's the same principle, a little bit different in the value, small differences. So I'm going to use the Setra book. So it's the same as Hivos, not exactly the same, but the same principle. So first of all, Setra give us four classes for footbridge. Class four, which is a footbridge that is far away 
it links sparsely populated areas so like woods or areas where there is no population three which, which is a food village with standard use and one and two in urban uh, populated areas so there's also the comfort level when you pass through a footbridge you can feel uncomfortable because you feel it to move or something like that so this is an average comfort there's the maximum comfort where you don't feel anything and there's the minimum comfort so first of all we're gonna understand the loads that come through the footbridge there's uh, the people will do a certain vibration for the footbridge so here you can imagine it's the back of your feet that touches the ground and then 0 0.5 second later the front of your feet will touch the ground so it's the back of your feet and the front of your feet then comes the next step so this is the slow walk you can see, you can see it's 0 0.5 seconds away fast walk it's less than 0 0.5 it's the half and these other type of walks so how to verify a bridge for the vibration a footbridge first of all you should uh, choose the footbridge class if it's four there is no calculation required to verify the footbridge if it's one to three you should calculate the natural frequency see if there's resonance risk level if there's no uh, risk so the comfort is judged sufficient without calculating if it's sensitive you should do a dynamic load case to be studied and see the acceleration undergone by the structure and the acceleration limit to achieve the good comfort level so let's start with the frequency the frequency of the structure is relatively low for a steel structure so if you have a steel footbridge uh, maybe the frequency will land somewhere here from 1 to 2 so there's the horizontal vibration uh, the vertical vibration and the horizontal vibration as you can see the the horizontal is half the vertical because uh, each two right foot will create uh, when you step two times with your feet right and left you do two forces in the vertical direction and one for uh, one force right and one force left so in order to do two force right you should put two left feet uh, two right feet where you put four feet on the ground so that's why it's half of the uh, frequency so when you let's say we have uh, a frequency of 2.5 so it's here it's in range 2 first of all we're gonna go to the, to this table here we're gonna see if it's uh, a footbridge with class 3 we should put case 1 which is a sparse and dense crowd case 2 very dense crowd and case 3 is the second harmonic so the second harmonic is this one it's the second uh, force that's caused on the footbridge so as you know the the vibration caused by the people on the bridge is a series of sum of harmonics so we should pay attention for the first and second one so here for class 3 we should only do the first uh, the first harmonic verification so only if the range is in range 1 the frequency is in range 1 so if it's in range 2 and range 3 there's no verification to do because it's a, a footbridge that no one walks on it's a, it's not a crowded footbridge so it's if it's 2 we should do case 1 if it's here case 1 if it's here and uh, the frequency if the if the frequency is in range 2.6 or 5 we should verify the second harmonic so if the frequency is here we should do the f uh, the second harmonic if it's here or here we should do the first one and also verify the third harmonic so for the class 1 we should see the natural frequency if it's uh, in range 1 we should do case 2 range 2 also case 2 and if it's in range 3 we should also uh, do k3 which is crowd complement harmonic the second harmonic so when the uh, the frequency is above 5 and above 2.5 
there is no problem. So the year code tells us that when the frequency is above 5 and above 2.5 for the horizontal, there is no problem, but these are very severe frequencies and they cannot be achieved easily. And the year code does not give a good detailed calculation for our footbridge. So here are the loads that we use for the acceleration of the and the frequency calculation. So to calculate the frequency, you should put the footbridge with also the uh, the crowd load. For class one, we use one pedestrian per square meter. Class two, 0 0.8 pedestrian, and class three, 0 0.5. What I mean by pedestrian is the pedestrian load, which is 70 kilograms, 700 kilonewtons. So this is the pedestrian load. Then, if we have uh, no problem, it's above five. There's no problem. So if it's under five, <coughs> here th these are the risks that are compared to the range. If it's range one, two, three, or four. So if the frequency for the first or second harmonic is below five. We should do an acceleration calculation here for the vertical and the horizontal. For the vertical, when it's between 0 and 0 0.5, it's maximum comfort. Here it's a mean comfort, and here it's minimum comfort. Above 2.5, the deck, when uh, his acceleration is above 2.5, it's not good, it's uncomfortable at all. For the horizontal, we should limit it at 0 0.1 to avoid what happened in France. It's the lockdown uh, lockdown phenomenon. So uh, this is it for this tutorial. If you liked it, uh, subscribe and like the videos. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment box. Thank you for watching.